Hello everyone and welcome to the Worldwide Center of Math video series on how to use your TI-84 graphing calculator. So in this video I'm going to be taking you through some of the basic matrix functions on your TI-84 graphing calculator. First thing we're going to do is go to the matrix menu. You can see it above the inverse key here in blue so we're going to hit the second button, inverse key, where it says matrix. So then it takes us to the matrix menu and what we see first is this names menu. These are the names of all the matrices available to us. And currently they're all empty, so the first thing we're going to need to do is arrow over to the edit. Let's choose matrix A, hit enter. First thing it asks us here is for the dimensions of the matrix. We'll do a simple 2 by 2 matrix for this video. So we hit 2, enter, 2, enter. So now we have a 2 by 2 matrix here. We need to input our values into our cells. So let's just input three. We just hit enter, it takes us to the next cell. Four, two, and let's say negative one. So now we have our matrix all ready to go. Quit back to the home screen. Let's go into matrix, make sure it entered. So now under names, you can see that matrix A is now a two by two matrix. If we just hit enter, brings us back here with matrix A, enter again, and there you can see is matrix A, three, four, two, negative one. So there are a lot of operations we can do on our matrix on our, matrix on our graphing calculator. Uh, let's start by just multiplying, say, matrix A by a scalar of two. So we just hit two times, go into our matrix menu, select A, simple enough, hit enter, and it multiplied matrix A by 2. Uh, let's, if we want to store this matrix for later, say we want to save this as matrix B, we can simply hit, after the calculation, we can go down to the bottom left here and hit STO for store. So let's say answer, arrow key, so store. And then we just have to choose what we want to store it as. We go to our matrix menu, let's hit down to number 2, matrix B, store it as B. So now we saved this 6, 8, 4, negative 2 matrix as matrix B. So we didn't have to enter it manually, which saves us time. So now let's, if we have a square matrix, with this square being the same number of rows and columns, we can also raise the matrix to a power. So let's take matrix A, and we can say we can cube it. Raise to the third power, enter, and it cubed our matrix A. Uh, we can also uh, add and subtract two matrices using our calculator. Uh, as you might expect, we go into the matrix menu, choose matrix A, add button, second matrix, choose matrix B, hit enter, and it add the two matrices together. Uh, same would work with subtraction. Uh, we can also multiply two matrices. Remember in your rules for matrices, though, that the uh, columns of the first matrix have to be equal to the uh, rows of the second matrix. They have to be equal. And that's the case for our two square matrices. So we can just do A, multiply, second matrix menu. We do that a lot. B, enter. There we go. Multiply two matrices. Uh, we can also use our calculator to find the inverse of a matrix. But we know that a matrix only has an inverse if its determinant is not equal to zero. Uh, and we can use our calculator to find that determinant for us. So let's first go into the matrix menu. Uh, the menu part we haven't used is we arrow over to this math area. We have a bunch of functions here. Debt for determinant. So we hit enter on debt. Go back into the matrix menu, choose matrix A, close our parenthesis, hit enter, negative 11. All right, so our determinant is not equal to zero. Now we know that matrix A will have an inverse. And in order to find that inverse, we again choose matrix A from the matrix menu. And this time we just hit the inverse key, don't hit second inverse, let's just hit this inverse key on the left here. A inverse, and if we hit enter, it'll calculate the inverse of matrix A. 
If we want to be sure that that is in fact the inverse, we could just check by saying let's multiply that by matrix A itself, and we know that if we multiply an inverse by uh, the non-inverse, we should get the identity matrix out, right? So then look, we multiplied the inverse of A by A, and we got the identity matrix. Speaking of the identity matrix, there is even a function to quickly generate uh, an identity matrix of a certain size. If we go into second matrix menu, arrow over to math, and you scroll down to number five, it says identity. If we hit enter on identity, it's the input for identity is the size of the matrix we want, because identity matrix has to be square. So let's say we wanted a five by five identity matrix. Just enter five, close our parenthesis, and there's a five by five identity matrix, which we could, if we so wanted, store that for later use. Uh, so now the last thing I will show you how to work with is that there's also a row echelon and reduce row echelon function to calculate those forms of your matrix, which is, of course, very useful when you're solving systems of linear equations if you've taken the linear algebra course. So we go into second matrix, over to math. We scroll way down a bit. There are a ton of functions here. Scroll. So we have REF and RREF, so row echelon form and reduce row echelon form. Uh, they both just take a matrix as an input, so let's just choose row echelon form. We go to second matrix, choose matrix A, close our parenthesis, and it will calculate the row echelon form of matrix A. And there it is. And so lastly, I'll just point out a few of the other functions we saw in here. If we, go, if we go back to the math menu, you see number two, that's T, that's for your transposed matrix. So you just do matrix number two, and you get the transpose of, say, matrix A. And you might have seen as we were down by row echelon form, uh, another few interesting functions down here. Oh, I went too far. We have row swap row plus, times row, and times row plus. These are all your row operations for your matrices. So if you were calculating it by hand, you're swapping rows, trying to find the row echelon form yourself. So you could also use the calculator to do some of those steps for you if you're having trouble calculating it by hand or whatever the case may be. So those are just some of the basic matrix features of your TI-84 graphing calculator. Thanks for watching. For more videos in this series, or for more general mathematics videos, you can subscribe to our YouTube channel by clicking here, or visit our website at centerofmath.org by clicking here. Thanks.